In the last lecture, we learned about how to work with post requests. We learned about how to send data in the body using Postman, as well as how to extract that data within our path operation so that we can perform some logic. And there's some issues that we're running into at the moment uh, based off of the way we've kind of set up things. All right, and the first thing is, it's kind of hard to get all of those values from the body. We have to you know, extract each one individually. Uh, on top of that, the client can send whatever data that it wants. And this is a big issue, right? I don't want the front end to send arbitrary data. If the user's trying to create a post, I want the title, I want the content, nothing else, right? I don't want them to send any extra data, right? And on top of that, the data itself isn't getting validated, right? So how do I ensure that the user is sending what I want, right? What if the user sends a blank title? I can't have a post with a blank title. So how can we validate that the data that the user sends is actually valid, right? And ultimately what we want to do is we want to force the user into a schema that we can expect, right? That's the term that we always use at the APS, a schema, where we want to define exactly what the data should look like so that it's almost like a contract between the front end and the back end saying, hey, the back end sends a message to the front end saying, listen, I expect my data to look like this. If you don't send me the data that looks exactly like this, I'm going to give you an error. And that's the way you want to work with APIs. You want to explicitly define what the data should look like so that the front end can send you exactly what you expected. So let's see how we can do that uh, using Fast API. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to make use of a library called Pydantic. Now, we've already got this installed because we used that all flag when we did pip install Fast API. So if you actually go back to your code and go to your lib folder, uh, you should see Pydantic somewhere in here. And you can see that Pydantic's already installed. So we can make use of Pydantic to define what our schema should look like. So let me quickly show you how to work with Pydantic. It's really simple. But keep in mind, technically, Pydantic has nothing to do with Fast API. It's its own complete and separate library that you can use with any of your Python applications. Fast API um, just makes use of it so that uh, we can define a schema. So let's import Pydantic. So we'll say from Pydantic, import base model. And so if we go down to our, um, you know, our create posts um, path operation, uh, you know, ultimately, what we want to do is we want to tell the front end what a post or a new post should look like, what data do we expect. So let's figure out what data we want for a specific post request. Uh, so two things that we want, we want a title, which is going to have, which is going to be, you know, a string, essentially. And then we want uh, the content, which is the content of the post, which is going to be, you know, some sort of string, All right? And so we want the, we expect the user to send both of those things. And then we don't really want anything else. We don't want the user to send any other piece of data. We just want these two things. And we can put in any other pieces of data we want. And so if we want the user to pass in something like, uh, you know, what is the category of the post, we can include that. Uh, we can maybe include um, uh, maybe uh, the number of, I mean, I don't know. You can really think of anything, maybe a Boolean that kind of represents, you know, is this a published post or do you want this to be saved as a draft? So you can construct it however you want, but we're just going to stick to title and content. So the way that this works is, I'm going to remove this comment right here. We're going to define a class. So we'll call this class and then we'll give it whatever name we want. It's going to represent what uh, a post should look like. So I'm just going to call this post. And then this is going to extend base model. So this is what makes it a special Pydantic model. We just extend the base model. And then here we pass in the different properties for our post. And like I said, we want a title. And we also want a, the content. Uh, now, what we pass here is going to be what is this type of data? So if we go to this Pydantic library, uh, you'll see that there's the different field types. So we can set things to be a Boolean, we can set it to be an int, float, string. So all of the common Python types, list, tuple, it's all available within Pydantic. So we know what a, um, ultimately what a, uh, a title should look like. So what do you guys think should be the field type for the title property? Well, I think it makes sense. It's, it should be a string because this looks like a string. It's got some text. It probably should be a string. So let's set this to be string. And the content should be the same thing. It should also be set to string. And now what we can do is let's take this model and go down to create posts. 
And instead of extracting the payload, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, reference that post pydentic model. And then I'm going to save this as a variable called post. Once again, they don't have to match, um, but since this will represent the post, I can call this maybe uh, new underscore post or something like that. And then, uh, and, and then reference the post pydentic model. So what's going to happen is because we pass this into our path operation, fast API is automatically going to validate the data that it receives from the client based off of this model. So it's going to check, Hey, does it have a title? If so, is it a string? If it if the title doesn't exist or if it's not a string and maybe we pass an integer, then it's going to throw an error. It's also going to check for us if content's available. If it is available, it's going to make sure that it's a string. And if content's not available or if it's not a string, it's going to throw an error. So it's doing all of the validation for us and it's defining the schema of what it should look like for the front end, uh, what kind of the data should the front end send to us. So we're gonna remove all of this nonsense. I'm just going to, for now, just say data, I don't know, new post for now. And now what I'm going to do, instead of print payload, we're going to say print new underscore post. So let's save this. And then I'm going to send a post request. Okay, so that updated fine. But let's take a look at what this printed out. So take a look at what it printed out. Look at that. It automatically extracted all of that data for us. So now we can access, you know, post.title and we can get the title of the post. And we can also access post.content to get the content of the post. And just to prove that to you guys, we'll say post.title. So we'll save that. We'll send a request. And now look at that. Look how easy it is to extract that data because it's already assigned to that new post variable. And we can just access each property based off of what the model is defined as. Now that's great and all, but let's check to see if it's actually performing all of that validation. So if I go to my um, Postman and I remove title, let's see what happens. I'll hit send. Look at this. Look at this. It's saying that the inside the body, there's a title field and it's saying a value error it's missing. Now we didn't tell Fast API to, to send this but it automatically does the validation for us and sends back an error message. And then it sends uh, back a status code. So this is the status code of the message. It sends a 422. We can change that later. Don't worry about that. But it's automatically performing the validation. And that's what's awesome about this. And if we, uh, if I add the title back, uh, what was it, top beaches in Florida? And instead, actually, if I change this to be um, a one or something, and I need that comma. Let's see what happens. If I hit send, it looks like there's no errors. And that's because the number one can actually be, um, converted into a string. So it's not going to throw an error on that. And that's perfectly fine. And I'll, uh, and that's perfectly fine. So that's not a big deal. Um, but let's change this back. Like I said, it's going to try to convert whatever data we give it to a string. So as long as it's able to convert it to a string, it's okay, and any integer that we pass can be converted to a string. So I'm going to change this back, and I'll add uh, top beaches in Florida. Oop, Florida. Let's see what happens if we remove the content now. If I hit send, look at that. Now it's saying the content is missing. Perfect. So our validation is working exactly how we expect it to. And then I forget what, what was it, something something beaches or I can't remember what it was. Now let's say that we want to, um, uh, assign a property, uh, that's optional, right? Like what if we want it to make it so that the front end can either choose to send some piece of data or not send a piece of data. So let's say that we want the user to be able to define if a property, uh, if a post should be published or not. Well, we can create a field called published which is going to be set, uh, which is going to be a type of uh, Boolean. And we can say, um, you know, first of all, we can say if the user doesn't provide us a value, we can give it a default value. So here I'll say true. 
And so if the user doesn't provide published, then it's going to default to true. If it does provide published, then whatever value you give it, that's what we're going to use it as. And I'm going to go down here and we're going to change this to, we're going to grab the published value. And then down here, we'll say published. Whoops. It's going to be set to true. So let's hit send. And we can see that it got set to true. That's good. If we set this to false, hit send. We can see that it's false. And then if we remove this altogether, move that comma as well, hit send. Look at that. It defaults to true. So now we've created an app, an optional field for our schema. So the user doesn't have to provide this and it's going to default to true in this case. Now, let's say we wanted to create another field. However, instead of giving it a default value, if it's not sent, we want it to default to none. So we want it to be completely optional and we're not going to store any value uh, if the user doesn't provide it. What we can do is let's say the field is a rating. Let's say the user can give each post a rating what we can say is optional and we're going to have to import optional uh, from typing from the typing library. So import optional. And then we have to pass in the type. So what is it going to be uh, in this case, a rating, I think an integer makes sense. And then we can say equals to none. So this is going to be a fully optional field. And if the user doesn't provide it, it's going to default to a value of none. And so here I'm just going to get the, uh, the value of our rating. And so if I hit send right now in our body, we don't have a rating field. If I hit send, you can see that it defaults to a value of none because we set this to be optional none. However, if I pass in a rating field, I need to give it a value, some kind of value. So I'll say, we'll, we'll give this maybe like four stars or something. I hit send, we can see that now look, the value of rating is set to four. And then finally, the last thing I want to note is because we set the type to be an integer, so even though it's optional, we still have to specify the type. If I give this a value of a string, so, you know, something like hello, which is not a valid rating, take a look at what happens. Look at that. It says in the body, the rating field, the value is not a valid integer. So it wasn't able to convert whatever value we sent into integer. And so that's why it's throwing an error and saying like, this does not match up with the schema and it's throwing an error. And so that's what's awesome about this is now we can ensure that our front end is sending the exact data that we expect by using these Pydantic models. So moving forward in this course, we are going to really make use of Pydantic models to ensure that the schemas, not only receiving data from the front end, but also sending data back is all um, matching up with our organized schema. And actually there's one last thing I want to show you guys. And that is that when we actually um, kind of extract that data and save it into new post, uh, it actually stores it as a Pydantic model. So it's a specific Pydantic model and each Pydantic model has a method called dot dict. So if I do, um, if I print new post below this, what we can do is if you ever need to convert your Pydantic model, to a dictionary, all we have to do is write the name of the variable and we say dot dict. So this is going to take that Pydantic model and then it's going to convert it to a dictionary. So let's print that out. Let's save it. Let's hit send. Whoops. And I forgot to. It's still throwing a validation error, but that's to be expected. So we'll say change that to four. All right, take a look at the two different things. So this is a Pydantic model that's just printing out the different uh, properties of that of that model, whereas this is a regular Python dictionary. So we can just send back a dictionary if we want to. So we do return new post and save that. Now, if I hit send, we're just sending back a dictionary. And so now we send back the data with all of the different properties. And so you'll see that this is actually a nice little handy tool to be able to convert it to a dictionary, uh, which is something that we'll be needing to do in some of the future lectures. So I wanted to make sure we just cover our bases real quick on that. 
And also, I don't like calling this new post. I'm just going to change this to post for now because I think that's a little bit better, in my opinion, because it is just a post. We don't need to know that it's a new post. It clearly is. And let's just double check that everything works. Let's hit send. Perfect. 